Genesis Rising, Book 2, The Angel and the Beast, an excerpt by Virginia Wallace. A day's ride. One single day. That was all it took for Karis to reach the Sardonican army, encamped barely a stone's throw from the Dark One's forces. The rebel leader had made it that close to Moravia. The armies had clashed yesterday, and the Sardonican army had gotten the worst of it, falling back several miles closer to the capital. Both sides were licking their wounds now, or, as Karis suspected, Sardonica was licking its wounds while the rebels plotted. The scouts had reported negligible losses among the rebels, while the Sardonicans were busy yet burying their legions of dead. What does he look like? Their leader. Karis had asked one of the generals. No one knows, she was told. No one seems to live long enough to describe him. What is his name? She'd pressed. Who are his people? No one knows, I tell you, the general had retorted. None have succeeded in hunting him down. If you would kill him, find him on the battlefield. Kara smiled grimly, crouching low as she eyed the field of tents before her. She wasn't a battlefield kind of girl. She was a huntress. The rebel camp was well guarded around the entirety of its perimeter. Karis lowered her head, hiding her pale face until she found her opening. As the nearest guard turned on his heel, Karis leapt through the shadows like a panther. She avoided the torchlight as best she could. Fortunately, there weren't many torches, lest the rebels give Sardonica's archers easy targets. She bent over as she crept swiftly through the camp, silent and as fluid as the shadows themselves. She came to a stop in the center of the camp, eyeing an extremely well-guarded tent. The tent was large and made from expensive, ornately woven cloth. Ducking behind a barrel, Karis closed her eyes and reached out with her supernatural senses. There was no one inside that mattered. No Nephilim, no son of the supernatural. This tent was nothing more than a decoy, an artifice. Well played, Dark One, thought Karis as she rose again. Well played. Karis resumed her scouting, keeping a gloved hand on the handle of one of her katanas. She dared not actually draw it yet, in case the occasional light reflected off its polished blade. But she held the sheathed weapon at the ready, nonetheless. It took her nearly two hours to creep through the entire camp. Her heart sank as she realized that the Sardonicans, after months of brutal losses, were hopelessly outnumbered. If she failed to kill the Dark One, all would be lost. Karis was about to give up. She was on the far outskirts of the camp now, and it seemed that the Dark One was not here at all. She started to press onward, to sneak beyond the edge, so that she might return to her own army by going around the Dark Ones. But then, a strange feeling struck her so hard that it made her senses real. In a nondescript, small tent on the very edge of the camp, there slept her prey. Karis could sense the raw power emanating from the tent, almost a tangible thing beneath the starless sky. Whatever this dark one may have been, he was much more than human. For the first time in a very, very long time, Karis actually trembled. But she had a job to do. And do it, she would. Karis drew her katana slowly, cautiously approaching the tent. Closer. Closer, she crept, hoping against hope that her target was asleep. She leapt back, crouching low. Her target had been in the tent a mere heartbeat ago, and then he had moved, unseen even by Karis's supernaturally sharp eyes. He'd been inside the tent, right in front of her. And now... Now he was behind her. Karis raised her blade, jumping up as a snarl sullied her pretty lips. She grunted as she fell onto her face, a kick to the back of her knees forced her legs to buckle beneath her, and before she could lunge away, a powerful arm snaked around her slender neck. She raised her sword to plunge it backward, but a vice-like hand gripped her wrist, twisting it cruelly, until she was forced to drop her weapon. Karis struggled as her face was forced nearly into the dirt. She should have been able to escape this. She should have been able to shake off her attacker like a rag doll, but she couldn't. Karis fought with all her strength, but her assailant just held her tight. She was a pure-blooded angel, stronger than any humanoid alive. Why this sudden helplessness? He's only a Nephilim at most, 
a half-angel, thought Karis, straining. Are you quite finished? whispered a deep, masculine voice into her ear. Not by a damn sight, snapped Karis defiantly, her voice sounding somewhat strangled. Feisty, whispered the voice playfully. Forgive me, please. But you did come here to kill me, did you not? Yes, gurgled Karis, her temples beginning to throb. Well, this leaves us in a bit of a quandary, I'm afraid, said the voice with an eerie calm. You see, I never harm women. I am no mere woman, snarled Karis, fighting to stay conscious. I would never insult you by calling you such, said the voice smoothly, with a hint of amusement. Of course, you are no mere woman, but you are a woman, yes? Get on with it, gasped Karis. Kill me. My men, said the voice vehemently, are forbidden to kill women and children, or to rape, and both on pain of death. Shall I become the king of hypocrites, that I should bind laws upon others, only to break them myself? Then let me up, groaned Karis. That, said the voice gently, would be foolish. I can sense your power, your desire to end my life. My men have bled the earth red for this rebellion. Shall I betray them now, by letting you cut my throat? Let me go, croaked Karis, and defend yourself like a man. I already have, said the voice serenely. You hunted me while I slept, and I bested you. Our contest here is finished, my lovely friend. When you awaken, you will walk out of my camp, and back to your own. Am I understood? I'll kill you, gasped Karis. I didn't ask for threats, said the voice. I only asked if you understood. Do you grasp the meaning of my words, or are you some kind of half-wit? I understand you. Karis never finished that sentence, never got the chance to hurl her intended epithet. She gagged painfully, her eyes bulging as a hellishly strong arm tightened around her neck. And then the world went completely black, as dark as the night sky above. Karis clutched her bouquet of roses, stumbling through the line of slithering angels. She eagerly anticipated meeting her demonic lover, as she had a thousand times throughout a thousand dreams, he would appear through the smoke, as he always did. Kara smiled, her heart fluttering as she regained her footing and walked around. Would this be the dream in which her phantom lover finally took her? The dream from which she wouldn't awaken until her suppressed lust found its fulfillment at last? A prophecy had planted this dream in her tormented mind, and a sustained sense of longing had kept it alive. Karis dropped the roses and lifted her skirts as she broke into a run. This time, this time, she would be taken. The waking world would not rob her of her prize. Not this time. Karis skidded to a stop, clutching her upraised skirts as the nearest angel coiled around her. Something was wrong. The serpentine celestials were not politely observing her bridal walk as they always did. Their forked tongues flickered in and out as they spread their wings above the cowering bride, silently laughing at her mocking her. Feeling a sudden pang of terror, Karis lunged forward. She would not be robbed. Somewhere ahead stood her lover, every bit her equal in strength and power. Somewhere ahead stood the warrior from the orb, the powerful figure who made her shiver with unwilling lust. The angels, still silently laughing, slithered aside as Karis dove into the smoke. She fell prone into the grass as the smoke parted, still hearing the serpent's mute laughter behind her. She raised her head hopefully, praying to see those eerie yellow eyes, the cloak of shadow. Instead, she saw only a wooden edifice, worn and scarred with time. It was a set of stocks, a tool for humiliation. There was no altar, no marriage lectern behind which a minister might stand. Nothing ahead of her represented nuptials, or the benign piercing of her virgin flesh. 
Karis turned to run away, only to face a wall of winged serpents. They towered above her, the males spreading their hoods wide as the females merely stared in derision. There was no choice left. Karis could not walk backward, so she must press onward. She took a halting step forward, lifting her skirts as she tried to walk around the stocks. Her vision fuzzed over as the smoke overwhelmed her. When it cleared, there were no angels. There were no stocks, either. Nor was she wearing a dress. She was simply walking. On either side of her path were mere men, armed and scarred. There were no angels. She was not asleep. And this was the real world. Karis was armed still. She could feel the weight of her sword strapped securely to her back. She could attack, she knew, and maybe even survive this night. And then she closed her eyes, her senses reeling. She could feel the Dark One lurking in the shadows. He followed her silently, hidden behind his minions. If Karis struck, so also would he. She would be humiliated yet again. Of this, she was certain. Karis bit her lip and walked onward through the throng of battle-hardened warriors. She felt like Lady Godiva of the ancient human myth, riding naked through her own town. She'd never been beaten by a mere mortal, never made to submit or surrender. She'd thought herself nearly a goddess, invulnerable, even invincible. But this night had finally seen the fallen reaper humbled. Karis blinked back tears as she walked steadily onward, trying to ignore the contemptuous stares of the fighters who flanked her path. She could sense their insolent thoughts, just as surely as she could sense the Dark One stalking her from the shadows. She'd lost this day. Her quest had gone down in flames. Only when she approached the edge of the camp did Karis dare to break into a run. Her flight made for the ultimate humiliation, the worst insult of all. No one attacked her as she fled the camp, or attempted to cut off her escape. Karis felt like a mere fly, casually swatted away from a plate of food. She couldn't actually hear the Dark One laughing at her from the shadows, but to her mind's ear, the silent sound of his mirth was far beyond deafening.